Welcome back, viewers, to the continuation of the Big Ben Chime Alarm Style 4 Rebuild. I'm going to put the balance wheel back in the movement and see about setting the beat and making it ready to run. And I'm using the tweezers there to help pick up the balance wheel and get it positioned. And let me zoom in on this. I think you're going to want to see this a little bit better. Try to try to make sure that what I'm doing is in focus. I might go ahead and use those tweezers. I've done this a couple times without them. Things just a lot smaller. Let's do it with the impulse pin over here. Okay. Alright, I'm feeling to make sure that that's trapped in the, the cup. And you see how the balance wheel is free to vibrate. I'm going to keep tightening this down until it's not free anymore. Like that. See, it's not free. I'm going to back it off about that much. It has just a little bit of flex. Now, I might have to back it up just a touch more because when the movement is installed in the case, it might squash things down just enough that it's not going to be free. Okay. Now we need to get the hairspring in the right place. And that's not right. We need to come around this way with it. Turn this this way. Okay. Something that's not magnetic. What have I got handy? Let's just use these. Okay. As you can see, I didn't grab the hold of the hairspring or anything. I just guided it into the hole there. Alright, and you see that I have the impulse pin in the wrong place. And you come back around like this. Okay. Now we're in the right shop. See that? Okay. I'm actually watching this through the uh, camera because it's magnifying it quite a bit more than just watching it in real life. And uh, it's making it a lot easier to do. Okay, now let's go ahead and move this back over there out of the way. Now I want to get the hairspring in the hole of the stud there. Okay. Watch 
like that. Now we can set the beat. And if you look right here, ask yourself, is it in beat or not? And the answer is no, that is not in beat. The position for it to be in beat is this position here. So very gently, tease the hairspring a little bit. until it's in beat like that. And then find the taper pin that holds the hairspring to the stud. And if you lose it, then that's what taper pin assortments are for, so you can make a new one. And it is not wanting to pick up with the pliers that I used to remove it. Right, there's our taper pin. Okay, I'm going to hold the balance wheel steady. And we're going to need to do some adjustment here in the way the taper pin is held. So that I can get it in the right way. And you see there's the pillar right here that keeps getting in my way, huh? So we're going to go to something else to hold the pin. We're going to switch back to the blunt instrument that was used to remove the pin. My instrument of choice. Okay. Now you see that as the pin went into the hole, it carried the hairspring with it slightly. So the solution to this is to pull it back out and to figure out how much it's pulling it out and move it back in the opposite direction. Okay. I'm going to tease the hairspring just a little bit with the taper pin. And I'm going to try to go out of beat just a little bit the other way in about the same amount that the hairspring you know went went past where it needs to go. Okay. All right. Now, I'm not going to hold the balance wheel this time. I'm going to insert the taper pin and we'll watch the balance wheel and see if it rotates any as the pin is installed and the answer is yes it did you can see it's in beat now and I'm just gonna push that in a little bit and you can see I got that pinned pretty good that's pinned a lot better than it was when I took the movement apart previously Uh, so we're going to test it now. Just apply just a little bit of light finger pressure to the fourth wheel here. And you see it took right off. I can see it's wanting to hang up just a little bit though. might be a slight issue with the escapement on this might not be so let's get a winding key
you saw that's about one and a half turns from fully unwound. Alright, that motion is not very impressive. Not very impressive at all. But I haven't oiled anything either. It might improve with, with, with lubrication. It is a clean movement though. It You would think it would run right. Um, so we might need to take a look at the escapement and see if there's an issue. It could be something else. So you saw when I moved the the uh, regulator to the slow position, the motion in increased dramatically. It's telling me there might be a beat problem with this hairspring here. You see how moving the regulator is affecting the hairspring slightly. the full fast position. Ooh, that's not good. We don't want to kink the hairspring. You see where that's kinked at? There's a spot right there. Apply a little bit of corrective pressure to it right there like that. See how it's wanting to bind up? This hairspring does have some alignment issues. We can try to use the tweezers or a small pair of needle nose pliers to try to iron that kink out right there. Okay. We might need to let the mainspring back down so there's no power on this so we can see what effect that's having on the beat. But this, this hairspring is going to require a little bit of corrective bending uh, to be good and useful. Now the motion it's making right there is, that's excellent. Look, look at how much that's moving back and forth. Like I said, you see there's still a lot of corrective bending that needs to be made there. Unfortunately, these pliers have been modified for some silly purpose, but I do take the spring out of them. That's You don't want a spring, the spring to be in there. But these have nice, flat, smooth jaws, and they can be used more effectively on a big bent alarm clock spring to iron the kinks out. On a small hairspring like this, some tweezers are good, although these, I don't like these jaws. It really needs to have smooth jaws to 
do ironing work there on the on the hairspring. But you can see the impact that the um, adjusting the regulator is having on on the operation. Now I've done just enough corrective action there on the on the hairspring, some slight manipulative bending there. that it didn't kink that time. What I'm interested in is what the rate of the movement's going to be with the regulator in the range where it seems to be working correctly. You can see there obviously it's working quite nicely. So uh, I believe the escapement is fine. The problem is with the hairspring. It's just it's just it's just tweaked enough that it's causing some um some issues when the regulator is moved from one extreme position to the other. Ideally that hairspring, that outer coil of the hairspring should follow an arc that's the same as the regulator so that as the regulator moves back and forth it does not change anything else on the spring. All right, anyway, that's enough for this part. We, you can see that the movement is, is running. Uh, I might put another balance wheel in this with a different hairspring rather than try to, um, to correct this one. We'll just, we'll just see. So join me on the next part to see what I do or if I do anything at all. This is Oklahoma Bridges. Thanks for watching.